What's up everyone, the 2021 BMW 330i. So let's take a look at this, shall we? The 2021 330i is the seventh generation three series. The code name is G20. Now this color is Alpine white and it comes with the Canberra beige Sensitec leather inside. This car gets 26 miles per gallon in the city and 36 miles per gallon on the highway with a combined rating of 30 miles per gallon. It has 255 horsepower with a 0 to 60 a little over 5 seconds. Alright, so let's take a look at the window sticker, shall we? So, the ultimate driving machine. Alright, looking at the window sticker, this car has the driving assistance package for $700, the premium package for another $3,200, and it has the remote engine start. So the total MSRP on this is 46,445. All right, so BMW's newer cars have like this darker shade to the tail lights, and it looks kind of like they're smoked a bit. I'm not a huge fan of that. I kind of like the clear design from the older cars a little better. They also have the amber, but that's the back. And on the back, we have the backup camera, which is integrated into the trunk handle right here. So just like the older vehicles, pressing the trunk button opens the trunk by itself, just like that. There's no lock button here, like on some of the other models, unfortunately. The trunk itself is quite spacious. There's plenty of room for most things here. The comfort access allows me to not have the key in my hand, and I can just basically come here and open the door. You can also lock the car by pressing the button right here. So on the front of the car, this is the BMW's new grille. I am not a fan of this design. It looks very plasticky. I know the other grills are also made of like plastic, but this design, I just don't like the way BMW is going with this. Previous older design to me looks a bit better. Let's take a look at the engine. So the car has a turbo two liter engine. It's a four cylinder straight, straight forward. They don't use these six cylinders no more, unfortunately. And as you can see, there isn't much room in there to work on many things. Interestingly, up here, there's no fireproofing uh, cover. It looks like there's supposed to be one. I don't know why this is missing one if it is supposed to be there. The wheels are not bad. These are the standard wheels that come with this car. All right, let's go inside the car, shall we? Looking at the door, we have a handle here. The lock and unlock buttons are now here on the side. And the memory set buttons are also here. Then we have the standard BMW layout here for the windows. This button, of course, makes the mirror fold. The trunk button is no longer located in this area. It is now here at the door. The overall interior quality is not bad. I like this color interior. It looks really nice. Here we have our seat control. So this one is very interesting. So by pressing this... All right, it's really hard to see this. You'll have to pay attention really closely, but the bolstering is becoming tighter or looser depending on which way I press the button. And then, of course, you have your standard controls here of to the lumbar support right here. BMW has also done away with the famous wheel here for the lights. Now they're all buttons here, and this is to change the brightness. This is the steering wheel. It feels really nice. It has a heated steering button right here. And then here you have some multimedia for the volume. This is the track buttons, and then some phone stuff here, and then cruise control on the left. And then what do we have here? All digital instrument cluster. So turning on the car, you're greeted with this nice little digital cluster. In the middle here, you have a map, which is really cool. And then you have your miles per hour. This is your speedometer. You have your gas right there. And then engine, and then this one you can change. So by pressing the BC button, you can actually change the type of stuff on the right side, which is pretty cool. And you have your multimedia, comfort mode, and whatnot. And let's not forget this notch. I don't know why BMW copied Apple with this design, but there's a huge notch in the middle there. Over here we have BMW's latest and greatest well, I don't know about greatest, but we have BMW's newer software. It is still controlled by the iDrive system. So by pressing these buttons, you have these options here. So for instance, it looks like this. This is the get your settings here. There's many options here. We won't really go over too many of them. Driver assistance plus, this is a safety warning. Oh man, let's talk about this. Steering intervention. This has caused me to nearly die. So I turn this feature off because it keeps thinking I'm not going in a straight line, but I am. And it nearly made me hit a wall because it automatically intervened when it shouldn't have. The car also has an on-screen display. So if you look carefully right over there, you can see the on-screen display, which is really cool. So this is the new front panel here. And at the bottom here are these numbers. This is the memory for the radio stations. 
And then up here, we have our climate control. So if you can see here, this is the LCD for the climate controls. And I'm not a huge fan of this. I like the F series one better. This is the emergency triangle. And then this is the driving assistance. So if you click this, you can see the individual or all on. And I have it configured to turn off that automatic steering intervention. And these are the other options. So at nighttime, now when you press the button, the text is now changed to amber. The car has heated seats but does not have cooled seats. And I'm not too much of a fan of this little new layout here as much. I kind of like the old layout better. But this one has a glossy plastic, glossy plastic trim. Also can be seen here. Down here we have the cup holders. There's an NFC port here. This is new BMW's newer layout. So the start stop button is now down here. It is no longer at the top. And then at the bottom we have the Comfort, Sport, and Eco Pro. So this is the Sport. And then this is the Comfort. And then this is the Eco Pro. And you can see the Eco Pro has the miles per gallon there. This is the PDC system. So if you press this, it'll activate the PDC system, which by the way, does not show the camera. This is the PDC system, as you can see. You can't really see the camera. And you have this, you have the soft, soft touch material here. Opening this, you have a decent amount of space here. And you have your USB port right here. You have your SOS here. So you press this, and you can press that button for BMW Concierge. And this is the sunroof will go over, and then you have your lights. The lights are really bright. I really like that. So, of course, we press this. Opens the sunroof. So overall, the seats are actually quite comfortable. They're not bad. Um, you know, you can adjust them how you want. And overall, the car feels really nice. We'll have a point of view driving in a second here so you guys can see. But before that, let's take a look at the back. In the back, we have cup holders at the bottom right here. And then we have the window that, and then of course, looking at the inside. Of so yeah, this also, you press this and you can adjust how high and low that is. And then on the inside of the car, we have the black carpeting our seats which actually look pretty good and then of course if you don't have a person in the back you can just bring this down which I don't know why I had it up BMW is definitely thinking of the future because as you can see here we have we have the AC controls in the back and we have two USBs type C to charge your phone which is really cool so the back seats they're pretty comfortable there's enough legroom for someone like me I think there's enough legroom for most people, honestly. And then the center here, we have a little arm armrest for people. And it's made of the same soft material, so it's really nice. And then here, we have that cup holders. Up here, we have lights for each side. So unlike the 5 and 7 series, actually no, the 3 series did have these. So maybe there's an option that I didn't see, but there's no shades here, and there's no shades in the back. The 5 series and 7 series have those options. And the 3 Series also had that option. I don't know if this one has it. I should check that. I think it does have this option. But yeah, this doesn't have it. So there's, you know, sunlight coming in. You gotta tint the windows for that. So in terms of power... It's alright. 255 horsepower is not the greatest. So let's see if I can make this come on. See, that red light there means I need to brake. So one thing I hate is at a stoplight, the, the car turns off. So right down here, there's this button. And if you press it, the car stays on now when I'm at a stoplight, which is something I really hate. And these are the paddle shifters. Um, I like the old ones better from the older series, like on the M6, but yeah. So on the right mirror, you can see when I have a car in my blind spot, the triangle lights up. In terms of handling, the car can handle pretty well. It's definitely not an M car. But at the same time, it's definitely not bad. The ride quality is pretty good, honestly. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get a little uh, fast food break here. We'll come back in a second. We've got an M4 over there. Alright, so when you're parking... Oh, there's our E46 uh, right there. So when you're parking it automatically turns on the PDC system when it detects something in the way. So I go a little bit more forward here. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it knows that there's an obstacle in front of the parking, which is pretty cool. So when you're reversing, if you move the steering wheel, the 
guidelines actually move with the wheel, which is pretty cool. So at nighttime, you see these lights down here, and we have some over here as well. On the... And here, we can change the color. So I can change it to green if I want green, or I can do blue. Let's see blue. And the colors are quite actually limited. So one cool thing about this car is it supports Apple's car key. So BMW calls it digital key and you can attach your iPhone to any 2021 BMW. So this is the 3 Series 2021 so it supports it. So let me show you. So I don't have I don't have the key on me. Actually I don't have anything on me. So uh, yeah. What you're gonna do. So what you're gonna do is you need to unlock the thing and then you're gonna touch it right here. There you go, unlocks the car. You can also start the car and drive off with this. So let's sit inside the car and check that out. So you can also start the car with your phone as well. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna put the phone down here in the little NFC reader. And now we're gonna go ahead and start the car. So you can start the car, you can drive the car with your phone and basically anything you can do with the key, you can basically do with your car. So you can also share the car key to someone else that has an iPhone. I believe the requirement is the 10s Max or 10s series or higher, I believe. I know, I know the 11 supports it because I did this earlier, but you can text message someone in iMessage your key and you can give them permission on what they can do with the car. So they can drive off your car if you'd like, which is pretty cool. And at the same time, it's kind of scary because if someone gets your phone and know your password, well, there goes your car. So the 2021 BMW 330i is a great way to get into the whole BMW family. I think the 3 Series is probably one of the most popular series. I've owned literally the E36, E46, E90, and then the uh, G Series. I didn't own the F Series, but... Um, all of them are, they're nice. I definitely like the 3 Series. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments about these cars. Uh, I also have videos on the E46 and E90. I'll link into the description as well. And there are a few more options you can get on this car. You can get the power tailgate, and there are, I think, two or three more options that this car doesn't have. So you can definitely get a few more things on it. It doesn't have the high quality interior as the 7 Series, and it doesn't have some of the features that the 5 Series has. It supports Apple's car key. Well, any 2021 BMW does, but this is pretty cool. So if you want a keyless system, these are the cars to get. And be sure to subscribe because uh, I got my first M car. So uh, we'll go over that in the next video.